welcome to my floss tube channel called Honeyberry Stitching. My name is Mayenne and um, I just want to say thank you for everybody that's been subscribing to my channel. Um, super exciting to be part of this floss tube community. And for my second floss tube, I thought I was just gonna stitch a little bit on the piece, my my Da Vinci piece, um, which I can't remember. I can't, I have the name. You can see it on the picture, but seriously, I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's Italian, that's all I know. Anyway, um, so I thought I would just do a little stitch with me and maybe just um, tell a little bit about some of the tools that I like to use while stitching. Um, so as you can tell, I am stitching on the diagonal. And um, at the moment, so this is even weave, 25 count uh, on the diagonal, of course, um, one over one that I'm doing at the moment. Um, And the method that I am using right now, whoops, is that I am stitching within the 10 by 10 grid on the diagonal. And I kind of stitch all of those stitches of that color within the diagonal and then parking it wherever, either in the same diagonal, like down here, or in the next instance, depending on when that color appears closest to the one stitch I've already done. So for this stitch, and I just need to, there we go. So this one has to be parked over here. Um, and yeah, another piece I like to have is a nice snack method. I'm I'm afraid I left it at the other the other place. So I'll just take that little piece down. Um so I like to stitch this piece I have right now is in a C frame, C um lap stand. Right now it's set up on my table, but I can stitch it on my table. I can stitch it in my lap, um, just basically anywhere. So that's really nice. Then I have, this is a set up in a Q-snap, uh, 11 by 11 inch Q-snap. And um, so that is my preferred size to stitch on. Um, yeah. So what I'm doing, and this piece only has not even 30 colors, I think. So not that many colors, and it's really, really a pleasure to stitch on. Um, so I'm basically taking, within that grid, I kind of take the lowest uh, thread within that 10 by 10 uh, grid. And the lowest thread I will take first, take do all the part colors, and then I will park them if they need to be parked. And then I will go with the new colors I need to stitch. I will go from the top um, right side, so top right, and go down to the bottom. So I hope you, you get what I'm trying to say. So this color, there's actually quite a few in this, this 10 by 10 grid. So I'm just taking it wherever the colors kind of go and trying to make sure that 
the thread at at least at as least as uh, does not cover the holes on the back of the piece. So meaning if I need to put this thread down here, I kind of make sure that the last hole I'm stitching it is is up here. So I can kind of go on the opposite direction um, so that the stitch is not elongated. So the legs are not elongated on the on the back of the piece, which makes it easier for me or makes it that the holes are more um, not covered with thread because you all know in the end where you have to cover you have these little bits these little stitches uh, you have to cover in between all the other stitches it can get a bit um, there's not that much room for the thread to go in so I'm kind of trying to clear the hole as holes as much as possible to make sure my last stitches that go in has room. Do you know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean. Um, so, so that's why I'm doing it like this. And this one then travels over here. I try to kind of go line by line as much as possible. Oh, I see I already made a mistake. All right. I'm just gonna frog this. And then, see I'm new to this, right? I need to find a way how to talk and stitch at the same time and look at the pattern at the same time and all that stuff i mean it's not that it's like a big deal because these colors are so similar but i just don't want to start by messing it up all right here we go So in terms of the needle I use, um, this is a 26 and it is one of these uh, that has this ball point at the tip and for me it, it, it just finds the hole just easier. So I really like that. So it, it's... um. It's also easier not to make any mistakes in terms of um, putting the needle, you know, it, fi it finds the hole easier, the holes easier with this needle, I find. So that's why I, I like to, to use that. Um, Yeah, so this is my first time filming what I'm stitching, so I'm really, really hoping that this uh, turns out all right. That you can see what I'm doing, that my hands are not getting in the way, because I can't really, can't really see the camera. So basically I'm stitching a bit of a blind, but that's okay, right? All right, this one goes down here. So this is all within my 10, my 10 grid. And I've been doing quite a lot of progress on this piece the last couple of weeks, which is nice. I don't, I don't seem to have any specific way of um, um, stitching my pieces. Normally I just stitch wherever 
kind of like every piece I just do one diagonal of the piece and then I will go over to the next um, the next piece I have that's kind of how I do it um, yeah that makes sense for me at the moment maybe I should have some other sort of rotation with my pieces but that kind of what works for me at the moment all right, so I'm now at the end of this grid by grid. I just need three more stitches. And then I will start at the top to fill in other, other um, threads. So this one, last one, oh, it's over here, no, oh, that was right. And then I will park this stitch down here. So this will be parked. I will, I work with Pattern Keeper, um, which I really, really love. It's a great tool. Um, all right, for my next stitch, and then I have, for this piece, I'm using these for my thread. Uh, as you can tell, that that's all the colors that, that I have for this piece, so not that many. Um, so I need eight for one so for my needles i prefer these ball pens ball, ball point needles i think they're called i'll i'll link them down below link them down below below all right in terms of starting a new thread because it's not too thread so i can't do the loop method but i've i've seen people do and I think actually it was Karen from Needlebug who kind of was showing this method. So so basically what you do, you start your thread from the top, go into the top corner, and this is when you begin when you want to start your thread in the bottom left uh, corner of the the stitch. So you go in there, then you come up here, and then you go into the same, and then you come up here, and then you can kind of make a loop like this. And then you go into the same, and then you have secured it on the back. And then you just finish your stitch, and you then you just snip off um, that tail uh, later on. You do it at once, or you can just do it when you've done a couple of more stitches on this row. So, on this row, I need to skip two. And when I go this way, I kind of tend to start in the upper right corner and go down this way it seems to be working for me you know what I, I do so many different things i'm not really sure what is right and what is wrong at the moment this is working for me i was in the past very very concerned about making um column lines i did my i showed my husband's uh family crest that I did in the past using very very strict um, method of row by row stitch by stitch on the diagonal and it gave me some awful column lines um, I'll just show them um, show a picture of them 
that is kind of like my biggest fear is just to get those threaded column lines right and uh, I, I don't know what method is best actually to use to avoid that so So at the moment, this is what I'm doing, and I, I try not to get my tension too tight, and I try to uh, feather in the lines um, as much as possible. Um, and, and kind of kind of random. So whenever in that diag in the diagonal that I'm stitching on, if there's a stitch that goes into the next diagonal, uh with the same color i will just um, stitch that so that's actually what i'm doing right now because this what this these tiny two stitches kind of go into the next column so so i will just be stitching those um at the same time that's just a way of i think avoiding column lines it, it kind of has been working for me so far to avoid those column lines um so oh got a knot in the back oops mm. all right here we go so this thread needs to be part and as you can tell, I'm actually pretty far along with this piece. I'm at 35. So, and this is actually the end of, um, I'm kind of, ooh, I only have one column left, then I'm, I'm at the end of the piece um, on top. So that is pretty nice. All right, so I will part this here. Mark off what I've been stitching and start another thread. Which is thirty-eight-sixty-four. And this piece is really nice because it kind of the picture really comes together. It's uh, they are very much all the same colors, but it's so interesting how this piece just comes to life. Um, I really, really enjoy stitching on this. And also because there's not so many colors, it's actually pretty nice. And it's a, it's a small piece, so it's not going to take me that long to finish. So, as I was explaining, so I come down in this one, this hole, the top hole, I go come up in my bottom left, go down in my bottom left, and make a loop. And this is a very, very, very long piece of thread. But I make a loop, then I come up in the top right, hold on to that tail a bit then I put my needle through that loop and wee this is a long thread oh that's embarrassing normally I don't use these long threads and then I you know go in through the loop and then I go down in the same hole again and then that is kind of secured and then I just end my top leg of the stitch and continue on yeah now I get knots in the back right because my thread is so long it's not good I need to be better at not having so long threads And also, I'm left-handed, so that's why I have my left hand. Well, right now it's more stitching with one hand, but normally I have my left hand at the bottom and right hand on top. And the 
that's how I stitch two-handed. Okay, it might help if I did fold it out like this. Um, so. Um, so this is kind of how I do this. Um, what else can I say? I like using these magnetic um, rubber things. I have them on my piece and it holds my scissors, it holds my needles, it holds my snack nabbit. Um, you know, all the little tools that, that is nice to have handy. Um, I have a little pin bucket for my thread. I have uh, this one little thing, pie shaped thing for my extra needles and my snack nabbit, which is, yeah, it's on my other piece. Um, so I use that. Oh yeah, then I use these guys, these bobbins for, you know, taking all the threads and just securing that up so they don't, um, get all over the place or a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more out of the way. Um, so that's kind of what I like. And I have one subscriber who was asking me to do a tutorial on uh, the thread organizers that I have been making myself. And if you hold on, I'll just find that. So this is an example of one that I made, um, which is basically very similar to the Peko thread organizer and she was asking me if I if I was gonna make a tutorial and I really want to do that so I just need to get some of the material um, ready and then uh, I'll be sure to make a tutorial on that because I actually need some more of these because I am gonna do for my next full project new start I'm gonna do the Mirabilia <laughs> I'm super excited about that. It's gonna be my first Mirabilia. And I think I'm gonna do, is there someone called the Sleeping Princess? Um, so I bought that piece. I will just link it and put a picture on what it looks like. Um, so that's gonna be my first Mirabilia ever to do. So that's exciting. And uh, so I need some new thread organizers for that piece. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be my next project to do. All right, this needs to be part over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Right here. Mark all of those off. Pick the next color, 640. Yeah, what else can I say? Um, yeah, as I was saying, I live in Switzerland at the moment. My family are, I'm Danish, so I have most of my family live in Denmark. I have two sons. I have one living in Denmark. He's married and uh, he has a daughter. She's just turned two. Molly is her name. She's just the cutest. And I just love spending time with her. So whenever I can, I go up to Denmark to spend time with, with her and the family. And, um, yeah, that's just the best. And um, and then my daughter-in-law is pregnant again. It's also gonna be a girl. So, uh, so she's set for end of August. So that's super exciting. It's gonna be a grandmother again. 
so that is very exciting. I'm not sure where I need to go from here. Hmm. I might have made a mistake. Ah. Ah, okay, I see what I did. I park. No, that's fine. This should be right. Alright, so that one is just gonna be stitched. Um, yeah, so my family is in Denmark. I have two sons. One lives in Denmark and one lives in Canada. So we used to live in Canada uh, earlier in Ottawa. So that was very nice. I love living in Canada. That was a nice place to live. Um, so he kind of came to visit us and then you know, he stayed. <laughs> so he loved it there so much that he decided to stay. And he now lives in Calgary. And uh, so I, as often as I can, I visit him and his girlfriend as well. Um, she's amazing. So I visit them as often as I can, which is, well, from Switzerland, it's not that often I get to see them. So, but as often as I can, I go and see them. Yeah, uh, so that's kind of a little bit how I'm stitching at the moment. I mean, this can always change, right? I mean, nev nothing is really fixed um, in the world of cross stitch. We kind of tend to want to try some new methods and see what everybody else is doing and just uh, find a new way of doing things so it doesn't get boring and things like that. So, but at the moment, and especially on this piece is what I'm doing here. I have other pieces that uh, I'm starting in the left-hand corner. Um, but... I don't know, I just wanted to do something else with this. Plus, being left-handed, uh, I found out it's actually a little bit easier maybe to start from the right side and going down to the bottom left. Um, so that's just what I'm doing at the moment. What else to tell you? I'm not really sure. If you have anything, please comment or anything uh, below and as I said, I'm just excited about the subscribers that have found my channel and uh, and see where this uh, floss tube journey uh, brings me. So, bye for now.